Uh, in today's, uh, today's presentation um, for, for me, I'm going to discuss uh, the concepts uh, between the uh, NIST risk management framework and the cybersecurity framework, and which is better for higher education. This is a, a topic that uh, uh, goes into information security um, that, that deals with the uh, 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 adhering to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and providing for, for those factors for, for information in a, in a higher education uh, context. And so what we're going to talk about for the next, the next few minutes is we're going to um, uh, mention a brief uh, definition of security policies, talk about what the risk management framework is, in case you're not familiar with it, uh, speak for a moment about the uh, cybersecurity framework, uh, again, if you're not familiar with that, and then talk about some of the research that, that I conducted uh, comparing the risk management framework to the cybersecurity framework in a higher education um, context, and then, and then um, talk about some, some conclusions and some other, uh, some other uh, um, discussion items at the, at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I, I understand that we have a varied audience here, right? And so, so just to kind of get us all in the same level playing field, I'm going to, to talk for a few minutes about what information security is and specifically what a security policy is. Information security is defined as providing for the confidentiality integrity and availability of information for which an organization is responsible for. Um, personally identifiable information is, is, is something that every organization handles and has and is responsible for protecting, you know, like your name and your social security number and your address and your birth date and driver's license number, passport, that sort of thing, right? And the idea is that we want to keep people who aren't members of that organization out of our out of our stuff, right? Out of our business. Um, there's a number of ways that we can do that technically, which is outside of the scope of what of, of this of this discussion here. But there's also some non-technical means to provide for those facets of security of information security. One of those ways is to provide adequate security policies that are put in place on an organizational level, and maybe even as, as far down as to an operational level as well. I mean, chances are if you, you've probably had to sign a, an acceptable use agreement when you, when you signed into either a hotel Wi-Fi if, you are, if you're on site in Austin, or, uh, or, or, or maybe, maybe you're joining some other sort of, of public Wi-Fi network, right? And you likely saw an agreement that said, well, these are the things that you can do on our network, and these are the things probably you shouldn't do on our on our network, like downloading large files or um, uh, engaging in software piracy or, or, or that sort of thing, right? Uh, and so a, a security policy and a user an acceptable use agreement is one example of, of a policy is a ser is a set of documents outlining the organization's view on a security matter, whether that is uh, data encryption, whether that is uh, operation system configuration, whether that is uh, application updates. Um, there's many facets of security that an organization has to be aware of and provide protection for. And the guiding documents, the, 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 the be all end all of what, of what the uh, organization is going to do and how it's going to protect its information is contained in the security policy. Um, protection of sensitive information, inclusion of best practices in the, in, in the organization, um, what is acceptable uh, information resource usage, um, I mean, can I can can I be streaming stuff at work, right? Can I can I visit social media sites at work? Uh, and in a in a higher education context, we have a you know a significant amount of security policies that govern 
um, not only the activities of faculty and staff who are generally full-time employees of the institution, but we also have policies that, that guide the action of, of students, right? Both students that may be living off campus and living on campus. There's, there's different policies to govern those types of behaviors, those types of uh, acceptable ways to manage the uh, confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of not only their own information, but information um, uh, information uh, that the that the institution has has as a whole. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The NIST risk management framework is a is is an industry standard that has that is used in. Uh, in, in, in many different types of organizations here in the United States. Uh, NIST is a uh, acronym for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. This is a US government agency that just as it says on the tin, they, they create standards, they uh, enforce standards, they are responsible for for developing different types of technology and, and, and implementing those those different types of technology, one of the way, one of the things that they have done since 2000 call it 2015 or so is create a a, a non technical framework a policy based framework called the risk management framework to help information security uh, designers operators and implementers reduce risk of bad things happening to, to information. For example, uh, if, uh, if you have personally identifiable information, I have personally identifiable information, um, the, the university holds a good chunk of my uh, personally identifiable information. Uh, if I'm not following the risk management framework, there is a darn good chance that my per, that my information that's unique about me will get out of the control of the university, be used by a uh, by an adversary. My identity gets stolen, and I have to go and change the, all my debit card numbers again, right? Or I get caught up in an in an identity theft uh, um, uh, or, or an identity breach, such as Equifax or the Los Angeles Unified School District, or American Airlines, or you, there's a whole truckload of different types of data breaches and different companies that have been breached. Um, our information is, is at risk, and the risk management framework, uh, one of its goals is to help reduce that risk down to a manageable or an acceptable level by providing a series of standards and guidelines that can help protect an information system that can help guide an operator in implementing appropriate operating system configurations, appropriate uh, application, uh, application hardening, um, it, uh, applying software patches and operating system patches, um, scanning regularly for, for, for known vulnerabilities to make sure that those are, have been addressed and mitigated on, on, on a regular basis. The use of the risk management framework is required for all uh, all federal systems, which um, is is very liberally defined as all systems that the United States government either directly controls or pays for. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's recommended for use on all non-federal systems as well. Now we can compare and contrast the risk management framework that we have here with the cyber security framework. They are similarly named. A lot of times they get they they get uh, uh, confused. They're both managed and published by by NIST, so that kind of adds to the adds to the confusion a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the the interesting thing about the cybersecurity framework is that it can be used by by any size of ins of a company from a very small shop of maybe 10 or less people up to uh, uh, companies the size of say say Boeing or Walmart or um, similar size of size of companies there that that have tens of thousands of of employees and many numbers of 
of uh, devices um, like the servers or desktops or tablets or uh, laptops, phones, anything like that, right? Um, we can scale scale up, we can scale down using the uh, cybersecurity framework. The cybersecurity framework is in, instead of uh, mandating controls that, that, that need to be used in a particular system, like the risk management framework does, the cybersecurity framework has secure, several security objectives and then points to industry best practices to achieve those objectives, whether it is the risk management framework itself, whether it is some international standards, uh, ISO, uh, the Inter International Standards Office has published several, uh, several standards that are internationally recognized to, to provide for adequate information security, um, whether those, excuse me, another uh, framework that the uh, cybersecurity framework uh, points to is the critical security controls that are published by the Center for Internet Security. Um, there's a number of, of different uh, types of control frameworks that the cybersecurity framework pulls from and kind of mashes them all together to create uh, a security objective. And sometimes that's easier to, easier to work with through and around for a particular organization. Uh, there's not any mandate to use the cybersecurity framework as there is with the, with the risk management framework we just we just mentioned, but it is a, a pretty standard uh, in, industry best practice and, and something that really needs to be um, looked at seriously when you're designing and implementing information security. So I had, I had this question, right, of, uh, of, of, of how is uh, the RMF or is the RMF being implemented in, in higher education? And if it is, uh, what are the what are the good and bad things that that higher education institutions are 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 finding out about about the RMF? Um, during my research, during my interviews with uh, with, with with some um, with some institutions, uh, some of the pros that they had mentioned was was that the controls are already defined. You don't need to go. You don't need to start from scratch. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to maybe tweak a couple of things for your particular organization and implement the control. Whether that is operating system hardening, application hardening, uh, different types of configurations, whatever. Right. Um, implementation is not easy, but straightforward in this case. Uh, you just it, you just execute what the control text says and uh, and then assess the control for, for effectiveness. It works out pretty well. Um, a con for the, for, for the RMF is there is about, the last time, the last time I, I checked, there was 350-ish uh, uh, sec separate security controls that are available to, to be implemented. It's very exhaustive and very expensive to, to implement, especially in, in terms of, um, of, of, of humans that need to take the time to go and implement and assess the effectiveness of the RMF. And as such, because it's not specifically required by higher education, by, by, any, by, by uh, uh, anybody, any, any regulatory uh, body that I'm, that I'm aware of, is maybe overkill for, for our higher education institutions. Now, if we uh, again compare and contrast this with the whoops, excuse me, whoop, whoop, with the uh, cybersecurity framework also put out by NIT, um, some pros here are that um, the baseline of information security best practices can be implemented at any level, right? So our operators down at the bottom that are actually Typing on the keyboard, pushing the buttons, making the making the bits flow from one end to the other can implement uh, uh, security. Our folks that are sitting up here in the in the executive suites up here can also implement security. That's on that's on their level. It's very flexible and very uh, can can be used by any level of the organization. A, a drawback to the CSF is that it draws from many different control frameworks, many different resources. Nine. Uh, the last time, last time I looked at the uh, at the cybersecurity framework, which was earlier this week, 
Um, if you're if, if, if the implementers are not familiar with all of the uh, control sources, they're going to have a problem, right? They're going to have a problem understanding which 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 controls is going to work best to in, in their situation. Uh, and and um, they may they may implement and execute the wrong control. And that is not going to provide for adequate adequate information security. And so I did some research to figure out how, if and how the, ri the risk management framework was implemented in higher education. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that practically none of the, uh, of, of the um, institutions that I spoke with are implementing the risk management framework. They are, however, implementing the cybersecurity framework and drawing from that broader catalog of industry best practices to figure out what's going to work best for their particular institution, for their particular situation, depending on the types of information that they have to, to protect. Uh, our InfoSec information security officers uh, responded that, um, uh, that the CSF was, was more flexible, easier to work with, we can we can really um, we can really tailor it to the to a uh, to to an institution's situation. Really tailor it to to the type of specific information that's being that's being protected. Uh, whereas the 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 risk management framework is very rigid, very uh, uh, inflexible. Uh, is 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 one word that they. That that uh, that my respondents use to describe the risk management framework, um, and when everything is implemented on, uh, in in the risk management framework, your devices may become unusable. They're going to be secure, right? You won't be able to turn them on because they're going to be that secure, and that's a problem, right? That what it's trying to trying to strike a reasonable balance between security and 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 usability and convenience. So, some of the points that 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 I was that, that I thought about that I thought about answering based on uh, based on the research that I that I um, uh, uh, conducted and maybe uh, 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 some some um, extensions of a research question is the first one is um, the risk management framework a one size fits all solution can anybody there any so any company of any size implements the risk management solution the answer to that is probably not right um the risk management solution excuse me uh implementing the risk management framework uh have, takes a whole lot of resources especially again the humans that that are needed to implement it Contrast that with a CSF. Is that a one size fits all solution? Probably not, but it is better than than, than the than the RMF. It is closer to a one size fits all than 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 the RMF, right? Because of the flexibility, because of the broader control uh, control base, the broader control catalog, and the way the the um, opportunity and uh, ability to tailor that to a specific situation. <clears throat> Does the uh, cybersecurity framework more closely align with education functions and uh, data protection needs? Generally, it does, right? Generally, it provides adequate uh, uh, protection for an, for a university's information base uh, with while still allowing for a degree of degree of flexibility. Uh, and the final, uh, uh, research question. The final question that I wanted to answer is: Given all of that, given my my surprise of of the the lack of a use of of RMF, I kind of switched around and said: Is the CSF recommended for use at higher education institutions? And my answer to that is: Generally, it is. Generally, there's enough flexibility there. Generally, there's enough. Um, uh, protection that's 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 uh, created by the application of the cybersecurity framework. That if that is if, if that framework is in use in higher education, specifically higher education institutions, 
We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And with that, I'm happy to take any, uh, answer any questions that you might have.